Okay, this um th this table shows us the requirements. So we can review the city's council guidelines refer to the park guidelines. So under frame the problem and describe in general way the data needed to satisfy them. We will get to the sp uh, specifics uh, of choosing data sets here. But the first guidelines was to find a vacant piece of land at least one quarter acres in size. We can break this down into three requirements. So land parcel, vacancy, and size. So how would you translate those words are very important. Okay, so um, that uh, the requirement for a land puzzle is already listed in the table. We need spatial data representing puzzles so that we can see the candidate sites on the map. And the second, um, the second uh, requirement is vacancy, which is characteristic or attribute of a puzzle. In a GIS data set, vacancy is often listed with other description land use, commercial, residential, industrial, and so on. So in general terms, we are looking for a land use attribute. So in row two, so which is right here, um, row two, table under attribute, data we will type um, attributes so we will say here will be uh, land use perfect and the third requirement is that the park um, be one quarter acre or larger like a vacancy acreage is an attribute attribute although it is one that can be calculated by the software because ArcGIS Pro can convert one unit of area to another we don't even have to start with acres any measurement of puzzle size will uh, surface so now uh, in row 3 under requirement type a quarter of acres or more so I would have a, a quarter acre or more here and then uh, perfect so but the attribute data it will be area so the second guideline under the park guideline is that the park within the Los Angeles city limits it sounds like spatial data and we will treat it that way for now it could be an attribute too because a field in a table might store the name of the city in which each puzzle is recorded. So we will fill row 4 as we think uh, should look and then check the figure here. So within city limits, so I would say within city limits and then we will spatial data it will be our cities <coughs> and the third guideline is that the park um, be as close as possible to the Los Angeles River so now in row 5 for the requirement we will put near LA River limits okay. And under spatial data, so we will put reverse. Um, so using the spatial data of puzzles and rivers, we can measure the distance from any given puzzle to the river. And the fourth guideline is to locate the park, not in the vicinity of the other park or away from existing parks. So now we will fill out row six as we think it should look. The fit guideline also needed to be broken down and we need a neighborhood spatial data that the attribute, um, high population density attribute data and lots of children attribute data. And neighborhood uh, tend, not to have, um, tend not to have a formal boundary so we are probably not going to find them um, as such in a spatial data set. As a proxy or substitute, we will use set of small standardized area defined by the U.S. Census Bureau. Either the tracks or block groups we looked at already. So now, um, we have to away from other parks. Uh, no, other parts. Parks. And then our attribute will be uh, census units or oh, parks 
and then for seven we will have um in a neighborhood so people can um can walk there and have a people to hang out there and then we want number eight um densely populated and population density <coughs> population density all right and then we will continue um lots of kids um age age we need to look at age um and we also need to look at lower income so income why lower income because rich people has big yards and they just want to hang out in their yard most people and we will say population here population all right so i'm gonna save it and let's explain a little bit so in row seven um we did as the requirement enter census units for the spatial data and row a we entered densely population for the requirement and population density density for the mm, attribute data you need people go there and you need a lot of children so in row nine we enter lots of kids for the requirement for the attribute data enter age so the sixth guideline is that the park be in a lower income neighborhood we don't need to repeat the spatial requirement for a neighborhood for uh, step six so now in the row 10 enter lower income for the requirement and income for the attribute data so the last part gu guideline is to serve as many people as possible so for this guideline we uh, we need a population attribute so 11 we enter serving the most pe people and that will be population uh, serving the most population um, attribute data eventually we will want to make a map of potential sites and we may need some data for uh, cartographic purposes so for example political boundaries and roads put maps in a familiar context physical rough um, relief creates texture and imagery provides realistic detail um, and then we will make a list saying that we enter a final map for the requirement under spatial data list examples such as mentioned here. So we will say um, final map, political boundaries, uh, final map, we need roads um, and some area imagery that could be interesting and we will save it and we will use it next. Um, and we will back on our ArcGIS. So, so final map um final map um, we need political boundaries political okay and then final map then we need roads okay final map again oopsies not gonna type all the final map so we need roads we need relief relief is uh, the highest point uh, minus the lowest point um imagery okay and now we can see that the data uh, actually have on hand to do this we will work on the project pan so we will use the project pan to manage the map and data folders the project pan is great for going back and forth between the map and the data which is um, most of the time ArcGIS Pro, um, so if necessary, we will continue working on here. We will display the project pan, and project pan is great. Uh, generally docked on the right of the map, sometimes hitting as a tab. So close the project pan. If we cannot find it, we always open by clicking uh, project bottom the view tab. So now we will insert a new tab for the project pan. I don't know whether I want to insert a new map or I can just copy and uh, make another one. So uh, we will have to look around and see what we have to do. We might not have to. Um, I don't want to. Um, 
so now in the project pane, we will expand the maps folder. Note that we will have. <coughs> I don't need create feature. I don't need to modify feature maps. I can put an yeah. We have an A and B, so we can still use this one. Um, and now we will click the map and pan and new map in the contents menu. A new map is added. So everything starts uh, from the new. So um, project pan, we will expand the folders by clicking arrow left on it and double click folder. Here we will see project folder that created when we start the new project as well as the park side folder mm, we connected. So now we can uh, go back to our folders. We can exp uh, expand everything here. Uh, our park side river, um, uh, the our river park side. So now expand everything we can under for the source data. Uh, it's a long list of items. So source data. So uh, that we have everything here. I can just expand it. They have everything for the LA. Uh, actually, we could download it online. Uh, there are some Los Angeles data that is available. Uh, you can subscribe there. Um, and under the source data folder, there are free fo folders in a geo database. Um, that each item is a piece of geographic data or a data container. So the icon signify the types of data as illustrated here, uh, representing the real world as data on the next page. So the census folder contains three feature classes. So right here, one, two, three, we use them already. The census folder contains three feature classes of census data in shapefile format. Those are all shapefile. You can see .shp. And then the city of Los Angeles folder, um, three shapefiles and a standalone table dbase format. So uh, this is dbase format. This is the table. And then the park data folder contains a shape file, which was new parks dot shape file. And the geo database contains 10 features. Um, we, we only see the feature classes, four feature classes, but 10 uh, features. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Perfect. And the feature classes are systematically organized in containers called feature uh, data sets. So in the next uh, several sections, we will preview a lot of this data to make sure we have the features and attributes we listed in the data required table. Um, okay, and also we represent the uh, the real world as data. So how would you create information system to organize and manage the huge variety of geographic stuff in the world? So one approach is to think of all that stuff in terms of discrete objects. So the discrete ob uh, object view of the world. Now, if we conceive of geography in terms of objects, we can sort these objects by similarities. Shape is a fundamental sorting principles. Every object can be drawn into two dimension as either as a point, line, or polygon, thing or type as another principle. Every object can be classified as a school, a road, or a park, or something else. Applying this uh, sorting principles of shape and thing, we can come up with collections of things we would recognize on maps. School represents as points, roads represents as lines, parks represent as polygons, and so on. So this is rast. Uh, this is not raster. Raster is imagery, but here we are. Points, uh, lines, and polygons is our we call it vector data. So each object in a collection has a unique uh, location. Specify a pair of spatial coordinates for points, or a list of coordinates pairs for lines and polygons. So a polygon with an X indicates its centroid, and the list of co coordinate pairs that defines its location. Besides a unique location, every object has a set of facts that pertain to it. Um, a name, a description, or whatever bits of information have been gathered about it. So the facts or objects are objects attributes. In ArcGIS, uh, a collection of such objects with common shape, common thing, and common attributes is called a feature class. 
So an individual object in the collection is a feature. So the feature class is the basic storage unit for GIS created according to the discrete.